Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and welcome to Board Game Inquisition and this is November's Monthly Roundup. So it's officially December, meaning it's probably a safe time to pop on your decorations, light the fire and get yourself cosy with your board games. Um, so yeah, welcome to December. It's been a very fast November. Did anybody, uh, anybody else feel that? Um, I hope you all had a good month um, and that you've been enjoying plenty of games. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with my monthly roundup, um, this is the episode where I sit down and I have a talk to you about the board games that changed in my collection. So we have famous segments such as, you know, what did I buy? What did I trade for? So kind of what did I get rid of? And usually I add a wish list at the end. Um, but I think I'm at the end of my wish list, so I'll try and add in like a new section. And of course, the most important part of all of this is that I want you to play at home. I'm kind of obsessed with collections. I love the idea of curating your best board game collection that suits you. And hence why I love hearing about other people's games and about how they collect things or what they've been enjoying or what they wish they had. And so I would love to hear from you in the comments about you know what you've been playing this month and also any games you got rid of or that you did play or that you bought or you know whatever the case might be I love I love having you guys think about your collection the way I do I think I think it's good for us all because board gaming really is the kind of hobby where you could just hoard stuff and you could just keep buying things um without you know ever necessarily getting around to playing them so I think it's good that we think about what we're buying or you know what we're putting in our collections and making sure that it, you know it's worth it right um board games aren't cheap um so See, the reason I'm thinking so much about collections is because I did a lot of thinking about my own. Um, so last month we came back from Essen and of course inevitably there is a, a large amount of board games and I'm working my way through them all um, and I still have some really exciting reviews to bring you um, with the games from Essen that I'm working working my way to. Um, <laughs> it's a very funny feeling um, as a reviewer to be like I want to play all of the games but there are so many games and trying to get to them in time oh woe betides me um, but it's you know it's a funny one you want to be able to give every game you play um, like 100% of your time and attention and show it in its best light and playing all these board games it can get pretty fatiguing especially when it's necessary or you have to do it or there's a deadline so it's a bit weird but it got me thinking about my collection as a whole um, because the, you know I had so many games I think I think it's collectors and as gamers we go through this phase or at least I did anyway where when I started in with modern board gaming there were so many things I wanted to try so for instance you know you'll look online and people will talk about particular games or types of games and you're kind of you're very eager to test things out and and because we don't really have a, a play group per se um, we ended up buying things that we wanted to try because you know that seems to be the only way to do it and with that then just seemed a continual kind of list of things I wanted to try um, and finally I think I've got to the end of it I think I've come out the other side like that type of gaming can't really sustain itself forever now can it um, it seems completely unreasonable um, and so with all these games here um, this month um, we decided to do a really big clear out right we had a number of games for trade and they weren't really going anywhere and we're like you know we're just going to try and sell them we very rarely make sales posts it's not it's not something i'm behind but a i needed space and b i think i just i wanted to clear the clutter so then you can really focus your collection now i i keep the games that are for trade or for sale in a separate section to the games you play but there's still something about having them round um and i was like i really want to clear them out so we did a big sales post and I think we sold about 30 games <laughs> which was a lot more than we'd intended and I will in fact list them I was wondering should I do something like the Animaniacs song where you list every state in the every state in the US of A and turn it into a rhyme but um, I'm not that talented sadly um, but I will give you a very quick rundown of what I cleared out and what that left us with was a surprising amount of money <laughs> board game money um, and so that led to buying a number of games and these are games that were right at the bottom of the wish list because they were too big, they were too expensive and they're games I wasn't sure whether we would enjoy or not and wasn't willing to take the risk on. So somehow this has turned into the weirdest month ever where I got rid of a ton of board games but I suddenly have a ton of board games as well, new ones, big ones, fancy ones. Um, I'm not really sure how to make sense of this. <laughs> 
It's a little weird, but I do feel glad that um, I did such a big culling. I think it was necessary because things just build up over time and I still have more games to trade and get rid of. And I assume that the more I play um, kind of the games I have or the newer games, that more things will get added. And it's kind of a continual process, isn't it? Um, as a gamer, you're gonna have some in and possibly some out. But it just made it for a very weird month. And for a little while, I was kind of sad that we got rid of those games. Just a bit, because there's something about having the wall of board games in your house, or you know, your, your personal shelf. And it looks a particular way and you're used to finding things in it. But um, there are games, they're good. Most of the games got rid of are very good games. They're just not great games. And it's, for, it's becoming harder and harder for a game to solidify itself in the collection permanently. Um, because we've such good games and I think that's what happens when you curate your collection you get stuff that's really good for you making it really hard for other games to get in there they have to really be something special um, so da, 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 da. so without further ado I will let you know the games that I cleared out this month right because you'll probably go ah oh, shock horror like I said these are all very 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 good games just didn't quite fit with us so it's a long list hold out I'm gonna do this flash in the pan um, with no graphics because I'd be here all day if I should do this. So the f first lot of games we got rid of, I'm not gonna have time to tell you about all of them. Maybe you'll know what all of them are. I, maybe I can do a sentence, I can do a sentence. So um, Black Orchestra, if you wanna know more about that, I, I did a review. Um, so Black Orchestra was a pretty interesting cooperative game where you had to kill Hitler. Um, I thought it was interesting, but had problems mechanically, but that's just probably because I'm picky. Um, I got rid of Merchants and Marauders and the expansion. So this is a game about being a pirate. It's kind of an open world thing where you head out and you do quests and things. Very nice game, actually. We really liked it, but you kind of want more than two players to really see it shine. So that's where that went. Um, Kemet fell the same way. There's an area control game kind of set in Egypt. Um, really, it's like a secret tableau builder because you're collecting things um, but it is a game about being combative with other people and at two players you don't get to use the full map I was pretty disappointed um, so Last Will uh, is a really unique game um, by Vladimir Suchi and it is one where the aim of the game is to try and get rid of all of, all of your money as opposed to gaining it so you've made got an inheritance and it says the first person who can spend all of their inheritance you know will win um, and it's difficult I found it very hard to think backwards because everything you do gives you money for doing it it'll get rid of some money but it'll still give you more so it was really hard to get all the way to zero um very very interesting game but one that once we played we kind of we didn't want to play again next up is axes and allies and zombies my husband made this as a purchase i laughed at him we've never played it and we sold it <laughs> um dungeon twister okay dungeon twister is another one that was my husband's choice and um, so this is a game that looks like it's designed for children maybe. It, the whole thing is kind of on cardboard, like the back of a um, cereal box packet. Like it's really thin cardboard. But the aim of the game is you've some little guys and you should run them through this dungeon. The trick, however, is that each square of the dungeon can turn and rotate. And it's got a little maze on it and your opponent can move them and you can move them. So you're trying to navigate your way through the dungeon. It's a really, really cool idea. Not very practical in real life. So that's where that went. Next up, went Memoir 44. Um, now, Memoir is a really good game. I really liked Memoir. We just don't get it down to play it. Um, the interesting thing about Memoir, so it's a, a battle simulation game, the Second World War, and you go through a series of scenario where one of you is the goodies, one of you is his body, and you set it up in particular ways. Like everything about it is lovely. It's a days of wonder game. And that means it's very kind of accessible and approachable. Um, but we found it maybe a little bit simple just for us because to move all your units, you basically draw cards. And based on what cards you draw, you can use the you move the units we would like a little bit more agency or control over what we did um still a fantastic game though um, and so is battle lore <laughs> battle lore is memoir 44 but with fantasy so there are beasts and units and that was actually pretty good too but it falls to the same problem of you use your cards to move things and that has its advantages too by the way um, I found it um, very easy to level the playing field with someone who was more skilled at kind of war games and things than I was because his actions were limited by the cards he had and it helped me because when I didn't know what to do you could only do what the cards told you. So there's a lot of merit to these games they just didn't get played enough. Um, Innes um, is 
basically Kemet but with the Irish theme and the truth is we love Innes we've always loved Innes since we bought it a good while ago now um problem is it's no good really at two and yet again we don't get enough three players around here to play things with us so we, we had to let it go sadly um so the next on the list then is Ulm Ulm, U-L-M-M, -M. <laughs> just in case I'm not pronouncing it correctly, Ulm, city in Germany. Um, so Ulm is probably the only game we debated the most whether or not we were happy to get rid of it. Um, so basically Ulm is like a, a little travel game, you journey up the river of Ulm and it's got a very unique mechanic where um, to get your action there's like a little crossboard, like knots and crosses but with little action tokens and when you put one in you shove another off the other end and that will determine what you get to do. It's very, very clever. We really liked it too, but it just, it fell into that category of it. It wasn't simple enough to be a quick game and it wasn't, you know, medium weight enough to be one of the medium weight games. Yeah, it fell somewhere in the middle, but we really, really liked it. We were just not able to play it. Um, next up is Downfall of Pompeii. And this is a game where a volcano erupts and yes, there is in fact a 3D volcano in the game that you can put a tea light in and the whole thing glows beautiful um, and the aim of this game is there's two halves so in the first half you're populating um, the city of Pompeii so you want to get your people in good places for the second half when the volcano erupts and then you have to get your people out the doors of the buildings to escape from the lava um, it's super super fun it's very simple very straightforward yet again needs probably more than two players I think I just I'm too I keep hoping that these games um, that look like they're for more you know that have two people as part of their player count but it isn't really good for the player count I don't know I keep picking them up um, and they're games I love as well which is really annoying next up was we got rid of both Century Spice Road and Century Eastern Wonders um, when Spice Road came out we liked it a lot actually we played it quite a bit I found it really basic um, and I'm, I'm also the type of person who doesn't like Splendor so you know that might explain that Century Eastern Wonders is the next in the series of three and this one was better it's one of the little boats and you travel around the islands delivering spices um, but we just we never I don't know we played them a bit and then not anymore um, I think that they're slightly too long to play them as in they're close enough that you could have played let's say like a game that's an hour in length or something like that especially Eastern Wonders takes a lot longer um, and they're pretty and they're they're fun I don't think there's anything wrong with them we just we just never got to them okay next up ghost stories ha ah, given uh, go, okay, ghost stories is a game about well fighting ghosts um it's a cooperative game which is probably one of the main reasons why we're not playing it it's also pretty hard um which is a good which is a good thing to say i think my husband and i made a good stab at it once or twice yet again this is a game you want a group of people with laughing and joking and doing your best to survive you know the all the onslaught of ghosts um so it falls down with that um time stories all right time stories a time stories is like quantum leap the board game if you remember that tv show i used to love quantum leap um so like time stories is a game where yes indeed you do go back in time when you're trying to solve some sort of crime or mystery um it's very much like i suppose one of those not quite escape room games but it's a puzzle game where you don't know everything and you go to certain places to find certain clues um and when i wanted time stories for quite a while and when we finally got it i i really I liked the first uh, adventure that comes in the box so then we got another adventure because um, they come like the expansions are brand new things to try out. Time Stories really is more of kind of a, a way of playing games than a game in itself. You know what I mean? It's kind of a setup and then you can add in these new expansions. So the second expansion we played and we beat it really, really quickly. And that was by accident. We guessed a code we shouldn't have guessed and got really far ahead. But also we didn't feel like the story was half as good as the first one um and we got a, another one we had a third one but we never played it and then the more of these that came out people seemed less and less happy about them and they take a bit of effort and time to sit down and play like they're long games because you repeatedly run through time till you kind of get it right um so that's why time stories has gone um next up is roman bones second hide um we have a love-hate relationship with seamon games i think so roman bones is a game about you know your two rival pirates on um on rival ships and you attack each other and there are other minions that move automatically on the board um you roll dice you get to upgrade what your characters do like it sounds like everything we should absolutely love but there's something about it that just didn't sit well with us or didn't 
it wasn't exciting enough for us to want to play it because it does take a bit of setup there's a good lot of models um it seems to have lots of good ideas in it but we just i don't know maybe it just it, we just didn't appreciate it i think that might just be the case um but we should have rum and bones is something we should have really you know been hot on the trail of okay so next on the list is welcome to from um, deep water games so welcome to is a not a roll and write a flip and write i believe and i played it for the first time in a friend's house um i have a friend who has all the roll and writes in the world and i asked to try welcome to because everybody was on about it and when i played it um i really liked it the first time i was obsessed like i came home and i couldn't stop thinking about it and i wanted to play it again and again so i put it on my wish list um i eventually picked up a copy in a sale and then what happened was we played it once i laminated up my sheets and i just didn't want to play it again i think this happens to me with a lot of roll and rights i love them the first time i play them and then after that it's like i could just play another game <laughs> so that's what happened to welcome to i am i'm almost near the bottom be proud okay so next thing that went was istanbul Istanbul's a marvellous pick up and deliver game. It's a game where you're moving around Istanbul to get particular items to help you to win. Um, it's really, really good. We really like Istanbul. Um, this is just another case of it not getting to the table to be played. Don't know if pick up and delivers are our favourite things, but this is definitely the best pick up and deliver we've played. Just wasn't kind of appealing enough to pull down, I suppose. Like th This continues my argument of we're getting rid of a lot of really great games here. Um, next up is Dungeon Raiders, which I also reviewed. Um, this is a game that really needed three people to play it, and yet again, wasn't the case. And it's a card dungeon um, where you and your team kind of fight along to try and kill everything, um, but you don't really have to help each other. But it was really fun. I thought that was actually a great game um, for what it was. Um, and I, yeah, I quite liked it. So I'm glad it's gone to a, a new home where, like, you know, three or more people will play it. Okay, next up uh, is Jaipur. Um, it seems to be sold a bunch of the small games, actually. So Jaipur is a, a very small two-player only game um, where you're trading goods and you're trying to create sets of them to get victory points. It's a lovely game. We played a lot of it when we first got it. We really, really liked it. I just think um, we don't play little games as often as I imagine we will, so it just it didn't really get played. Um, so hence why it's there. Next up is Tiny Ninjas. Um, this is another game I reviewed a, a, some time ago. And Tiny Ninjas is a really, really, really fun um, two player um, battling game. Um, and it uses cards and dice to fight each other. So you have a handful of like different type of ninjas and you try and roll and take each other out um, and take down the hit points. And it's fantastically made. If you're interested in two player only games with cards, you should really look at my review because the, the box it comes in is its own battle arena and a place for rolling your dice. And it's beautiful and it's lovely. And I really wish more people knew about it. Tiny Ninjas is a cracker of a game. It's really, really good. Um, but yet again, it's two player only. It's a quick game, it takes like you know 10 minutes to play. So it doesn't fit our wheelhouse. Um, this also doesn't fit our wheelhouse. And this was called Valfurion. I believe this was a, a Kickstarter. Um, and it was a card game. Um, we never even played it. Um, my husband won a copy of it on a board game geek competition. Hey! And we never, we didn't even want to open the box. We're like, do we really want to play this? Like, no. So that also went, which was a bonus. Um, next up is Not Alone. Um, so Not Alone is a one versus kind of many game where one person is the aliens and one are the humans and you're using cards to try and push your way up or down a particular track right so you have to one like you it's like a seesaw so one of you moves up and the other one moves down the other one moves over the other one moves over another bit so um that was actually really interesting it was a really good game but yet again another one i thought would benefit from having you know more people um than just two and then the last two um probably the most dangerous ones but coloma so Coloma is a game that's just came out at Essen and it is kind of like a roundel worker placement kind of game set in the wild west um, and this is one my husband got at Essen and we played it and I, I, I actually I really didn't like it I'm, I'm not gonna lie um, everyone else seems to love it maybe I did something wrong but the my big gripe for me was I did one action the entire game I did pretty much the same action the whole game and I won 
and my husband you know did things he moved around he'd way more cards and th stuff like that than me and he really should have won I felt like he should have and I thought it was disappointing kind of on the games part that I was able to do that it's possible obviously though the more you play it the better strategies you get but also this is another game that benefits from having more people because you all had to sit on a, a wheel and if two of you were on the same location you wouldn't perform on your actions but the chances of that happening at two players is incredibly slim so I yeah I just think it needed more bodies and the final thing that went was underwater cities so underwater cities <laughs> um, is basically a game where you build underwater cities, unsurprisingly. It's a little reminiscent of something like Terraforming Mars, that's what people compared it to, but it doesn't have the same kind of freedom of game. So like what you do on your turn is you have a number of cards and you use these to do different abilities, like you want to build um, your underwater city, you want to set up plants around it to get, you know, for, to get different um, resources and whatnot and the problem I had with it was you're limited to how many actions you can do a turn so it never felt like there was enough time to do anything. The cards weren't particularly exciting either. Um, I can understand why people might like it. Some people like more structured play maybe than we do um, and so that's probably you know that's one of the reasons why it went and moved on to a new home. <sighs> so that is the list of the games that we sold. <laughs> or the games we got rid of. Um, is there any of those you would have kept? I'm sure there's loads. Um, and like I said, these are good games, just not good games for us. Now, the interesting part is, so what do we do when we sold all these games? What came in? Um, and I'll tell you right away. Okay, so do you sell games yourself actually? How do you get rid of the games that you don't want in your collection anymore? Do you trade them? Do you sell them? Do you just give them to friends and family maybe? I'd love to hear what you guys do with them and have you had any particular success um, with, with any way of doing it? Maybe, you know, we can all learn a little something about, you know, changing our games. So, right, we're on to the what was bought this month. Uh, um, I feel a little uncomfortable actually about how many things were bought here, but the thing, the real thing is I didn't spend any money. This was all games that begot games. So I suppose I shouldn't feel bad about it. This, this is probably gonna be the cheapest Christmas we've ever had because basically all these games are Christmas um, and birthday presents because my birthday's coming up in like a week. Um, so that everything's arriving a little early, but on time. All right, so the first thing that we bought this month, and this was before we sold anything. This was supposed to be the one game we bought this month. Um, and this is Castell um, from Renegade Game Studios. And Castell is a game I've had my eye on for quite a bit. It's this gorgeous game about basically making human pyramids, which is called the Castell apparently, when you stack people on top of each other. And what you need to do in the game is go and collect different acrobats. Um, and there's particular rules for how you can build your Castell and have them stacked on top of each other. You'll want them to match particular shapes in certain locations or there'll be like um, exhibitions where you have to go and show off your Castell. Um, and it's actually it was quite nice it's a very pretty game it comes with the world's biggest bag like literally an A4 bag for all the tokens um, and I found I found it well I found it messed up my head a little bit in the same way if you've played five tribes where you're trying to get the colors and the people to match up at the right time and make the the best out of all of the things you have it's that kind of game I found it filled that kind of slot so while I thought it was okay I'm not sure it'll stay around in our collection because it just it feels like five tribes a little bit and five tribes I think maybe does it better it does have a really really nice theme and I like the components a lot it just didn't kind of like get me really excited I think it's just the type of puzzle my brain just doesn't want to compute so that was the first thing that arrived the second thing that came is something from Kickstarter. So it's proof by occasionally Kickstarter things. Well, actually my husband Kickstarted this because he's such a big terraforming Mars fan. And this was terraforming Mars expansion, Turmoil. No, we've not played with it yet. Does anybody buy expansions and play with them right away? Because I don't think I ever have. It's rare, it's really rare. So maybe sometime over Christmas we'll get out this expansion. The real reason for buying the expansion, of course, is the fact that you get recessed boards. So you can put your little terraforming Mars cubes into the slots. And we did play with those. Um, and you know what? Uh, they're okay. Everyone else went jumping mad about them. But my copy of Terraforming Mars has a magnetic player board um, with some magnetic cubes. So they, they, they click on each other and you can lift it up and spin it around and nothing happens. And I kind of prefer that. Maybe I'm just set in my ways. Um, but so the, yeah, that's the reason really to buy this expansion is those recess boards. Okay, so next, let's look at the list. 
All right, I'm gonna start with this pile, haha. -ha. So since the first thing I think we sold was Coloma and Underwater Cities, so that was quite a big bunch, um, there was one game I've wanted for some time and it's very expensive and I wasn't sure if we would like it and I couldn't get it out of my head. Do you ever have one of those? You just keep looking at it longingly and hoping it'll get cheaper um, and then you hear more people talk about it and it looks really good and you're like, this is so wrong but so right. Yeah, so that um, award goes to Nemesis uh, from Awakened Realms. So Nemesis is the Aliens movie, the board game. There's kind of no doubt about it. And I'd seen it in a couple of videos before. And as you may know about me, we don't normally do thematic games well. Um, we're really focused on mechanics around here. Like a game has to function well or have some sort of, you know, have a good system in place. I, I don't like games that just rely on the players to make the game interesting. It just doesn't work for me. Um, and other people can do that great and have fantastic times, but not here. And so I was nervous that when you get a game that's about such a big theme that we were literally just going to be rolling dice and running around in the dark. Um, that is not the case, folks. Um, Nemesis is amazing. Um, it completely blew my socks off. I was very, very, very surprised. Um, first off, everything in it feels like... It feels really deluxe, actually. It's probably because it was originally a Kickstarter. I have the retail version, not the Kickstarter one. I'm not that fancy. Um, the models in it are beautiful. I really like the board. I love the way everything's put together. And mechanically, it is super, super smart. I love the way the bag works. Like, there's a bag that has alien tokens in it. And when you summon an alien, the token comes out of the bag. And then when the alien kind of heads off and hides in the vent, then the token goes back in the bag so he can come back later. So clever, so simple, but brilliant. And I had a lot of real laugh out loud moments when I played this. It worked good at two players. I was surprised and it was great at three. Um, it's certainly lengthy and it's a big game and it's not something that's normally in my wheelhouse, but um, I was 100% right about this one. So right about it. So yeah, that was Nemesis. And with Nemesis came um, what my husband picked up, and this is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Is it of the West Kingdom? It is of the West Kingdom. It's sitting with Architects up there behind me. Um, so we really liked Architects of the West Kingdom, um, which is a worker placement game that's got a bit of a twist. Um, and we liked it a lot. So my husband was very interested in getting the, the newer version, um, the Paladins one. I don't even know what it's about. I just know it's got a long board in the middle, but this was his pickup and it was a tenner cheaper than anywhere else at the time. So that's why that's here. So that's Paladins. Um, next thing on the list is, if I go back to my list. Ah, yes. Um, so this is Madeira. So Madeira. What I know about it. It's an economic game. Yay! <laughs> um, Madeira recently had a Kickstarter where you could buy the new fancy deluxe edition with all of the expansions and I couldn't afford it. Um, and of course now that I have I have had a bit of board game money, as we point out it's board game capital really. We don't like having cash and just invest in further board games. Um, so I got a copy of the original Madeira because I don't really care about any fancy expansions. Um, and so that's right um, and I'm looking forward to that. It's got like, it looks like you do trading around the seas and things like that. I've heard good stuff so I'm excited to try out Madeira. And then the next next thing that came is, oh yeah this was all together. Okay so I finally got myself a copy of Brass. Woo! This is Brass Birmingham. So this is the one with the white cover. I think the other brass with the brooding man on the cover is definitely um, cooler looking, but this is very fancy. Um, like I, I haven't played most of these yet because good Lord, where would I have the time? And I'm so I'm I've popped them out though because I like to get a feel of them and a look and see what it's like inside. So yeah, brass is very fancy. Everything about it feels really luxe um, and fantastic -y. Um, and it's an economic game where you're moving coal around and there are barrels in it. Yeah, um, just general economy. <laughs> we do like economic games. I like economic games. I'm terrible at them, but I enjoy playing them. I also like root building. So, you know, that could work well too. You seem to be connecting up places. So that's brass comes highly recommended. And with this order came something that I uh, wanted for a really long time, but thought we would never, never buy. And this is feudum. Yes. <laughs> so Feudum is this ridiculously, ridiculously, ridiculously good looking game. But, and there's a very big but, and I read a lot of reviews about this when it came out first um, because I really liked how it looked. 
it is indeed a Euro game. So I was like, yes, yes, yes. But everyone's reviews went as follows. I really, really, really like this game. Here's the 40 things that are wrong with it. Like everybody, it was ridiculous. Like this doesn't work, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. And I was like, oh Lord. And then people were going on about how long the teach is, how complicated it is to learn. Um, and then the real, the, it seems like the real fans were like, you need to play it a good number of times and then, you know, it works. It, it's there, like it's just, it's just a lot. And I was like, you know what? I'm not really afraid of a challenge. I've mastered Burano. I can probably get through anything. And to be fair, and I don't mean this to sound snotty, but we're pretty good with the more complicated games. I think I think we're okay um, with those. So I was like, I think we can do this. It's very pretty, but it's very expensive. But then, you know, we were, we're at the bottom of my wish list here. Um, so I picked up a copy of Feudum. Um, I got a turn or two of it in last night, but then it got late and we had to stop. Um, and you know what? It doesn't seem so bad. It is gorgeous. Everything in that box is so fancy. Yet again, not the Kickstarter version, just the retail version. Um, I love, I love that feeling of I've got my money's worth when you open up a box, right? Yeah, I think we all love that. It's brilliant. Um, and so Feudum really, um, is this kind of a game about connecting guilds together what seems to be you there's a map you take control of but also you want to have influence in particular guilds and every time you do that it affects the guilds after it or before it and so they're connected like that um and i i'm i'm really looking forward to getting the full game down i hope to do that tonight but i didn't find it too intimidating the player boards and stuff were really really helpful and the rule book seems to be very good so yeah i'm i'm I, i'm very excited i hope i hope we like it i hope it gets to stay and i hope i was right more importantly right so have you ever had a game that you've seen come up cheap all the time but you never pick it up and you're still kind of interested in it but you wonder if it's going to get any cheaper or not because clearly it's in like the bargain basement pile um that's the case with noria <laughs> noria is a, a game by sofia wagner wagner i want to say um and i'm pretty sure it's about um having like a sky castle based on the cover right but the, what i know about the game and the reason i'm attracted to it is everyone has their own personal roundel Yes, you have like your own gear thingy. And I wanted to buy it actually for quite a while at, at full price. I would play full price for it. But then a particular sale last year and it was for, it was on sale for a tenner and I didn't buy it and I regretted it. And I was like, I'll never pay more than a tenner for Noria. <laughs> um, and as it turned out when I was purchasing brass, um, I could get Noria for a tenner. Um, and so finally I picked up Noria. Um, so I haven't played this yet either, um, but the gear thing is amazing. There's tons of cardboard in it. For a tenner, I have more cardboard than I don't know what. Um, but it looks, it actually looks really fun. I, I've heard good things about it too. Just not a lot of people talking about it in general. But it's one I've always wanted to try. And for a tenner, can't really go wrong with that now, can you? So that one was Noria. Okay, so next. This is where we kept selling games and we're like, crap, it's more money. So what else is on our, what else is left on our list? Um, and this is one that we spotted at Essen and we're very tempted to buy at Essen. And also we almost backed the Kickstarter. And this is Barrage uh, from Cranio Creations. Um, and it's designed in part by Simone Luciani, who you may know from such wonderful games as Marco Polo, Tolkien, Newton, um, I could name more. Grand Austria Hotel and we've I think at one point or another owned pretty much everything he's designed and we've also traded away most everything he's designed. Um, I, it's a little weird because what we found is with his games is that there's always one track too many or one little thing too much but when he teams up with people it seems to work out really well so that's and we still have Tolkien and we still have Marco Polo and um, we just added Lorenzo El Magnifico to the, the trade list. Um, and it's it's funny we have a love hate relationship with him so when barrage was on kickstarter we were dubious we're like we like his games when we look at them but not so much when we play them or they're you know they're okay but they're always a little too much or a little overly complex for no real reason you know um and so barrage was a big question mark and then barrage had a lot of problems in their kickstarter where pieces of it when they were delivered was coming damaged and things weren't working it just 
it sounds like a mess but I watched Tom Vassell's review um, on the Dice Tower of Barrage and he had a retail copy and it worked and it looked okay um, and so when we were at Essen we almost bought it it was 80 euros at Essen and it would have been the most expensive game I think we would have bought and we debated it we walked past the stand and we didn't buy it we caved and then we noticed that when we looked for Barrage for sale it was for 60 pounds a good bit cheaper um, for pre-order and the pre-order was happening like in a week so we pre-ordered Brad and sure enough it showed up and I won't lie I'm super flipping disappointed with the quality of that game especially for the price of it um, so the first thing I noticed when I opened Brad is in a nice box or whatever I found my rule book was tucked under all of the tokens so it was completely rent in half um, and then you get just these big bags full of tokens there's no extra bags to put anything in and the board itself is so thin I'm really afraid I will rip it I was disgusted with the quality of the board it's like a wet crisp packet um, some of the cards and things in the player boards are quite nice but I, it is actually just straight up shocking it's like the Kickstarter version has a recess board, right? So normally they just stick another piece of cardboard on top of that. It's like they just took off the recess board in the top and left a really thin cardboard. I'm really disappointed. Um, I'm hoping that Barrage will make up for this in its gameplay. But for a game you spend that much money on, you expect a board. Like, its components are worse than Castles of Burgundy, and that says a lot. Um, but like I said, let's hope it's a good game and it redeems itself. But for now, super unimpressed with uh, all I've done is pop it out. Um, okay, so what comes next after Barrage? Barrage, okay, so we're, we're, we're right at the bottom. So this one my husband bought because it was cheap for around the Black Friday times. And this is Mega City Oceania. Um, Oceana. <laughs> um, we also saw this at Essen all set up and look really, really pretty. And it seems to be a city building game with a dexterity element where you actually build your pieces um, using Euro game um, mechanics and then you like slide your city in to meet the other cities. Um, this is really lovely looking in the box. Um, sure, the colors are all a bit bland and plasticky, um, but it looks very well made. Um, I'm eager to try it out. Like what a weird combo, right? Like dexterity and, you know, Euro building, city building. It's a weird one, but it looks like fun. And a lot of people seem to really enjoy it at Essen as well. So there, there's, hope for, there's hope for that. Um, and then the final two things that are on the list. I'm sorry, this is going off forever. Um, so this just arrived this morning and it is my birthday present. So my, um, my I'll finish my sentence, won't I? Right, so um, went to, when we were at Essen, the number one thing on my list was, stay with me people, bubble tea. And Renegade Game Studios didn't have it at Essen. It didn't arrive, whatever happened. But it's still not being released in Europe yet, so I can't buy it. I'd really like to, but I can't. And it's a game, obviously, about making tea. You get your own shaker with the dice in it and everything. Um, and my husband ordered it from the States for me to have it here for my birthday because he knew I wanted it so much, which is super sweet and very kind. And it showed up this morning. So um, it's a light little kind of cutesy party game um i'll see how it, i'll see how it goes um haven't really even taken it out of the box yet um but it was not it's nice to get it i'm just really disappointed that it wasn't released here like what happened i, I don't understand i actually don't understand how um, board games don't have release dates like you know every other company ever um like can you not say when your game will be available for me to buy i, I want to spend money on your product you just have to tell me when mm. And then the final thing, the final, final thing, and this is the one I think we debated over the most, um, and this is Zia Legends of Adrift. Um, so Zia is a big box kind of space game, a sandbox space game where you can kind of, you can go around and you can do all sorts of things. Um, so, you know, you could carry goods, you could fight people, you could do missions, you know, it's, it's one of those type of things. It's beautiful. Um, I've seen other play, people play, I've seen other videos. But I wasn't sure if it would work at two players because it does say, I think, three to five in the box. So here's another case of me possibly picking up something that needs more players. Um, the good news is, is that when I looked into it and people read it, they were like, it just means it's less interactive. So you go, you go do your thing and I'll go do my thing and, you know, we'll travel around space if we bump into each other. 
And to be fair, we're kind of okay with that. I don't mind kind of playing the Euro E solo E games. Um, you know, where you're doing your thing and I'll do mine and we don't we don't meet. Um, I'm sure we'll miss out on some elements of, you know, the game itself. Um, but I think it'll give us a good idea if we like it or not. Because I know there is an expansion um, for the solo mode. Meaning I think you could probably add like another player in. I don't know if that's true. But um, I'm eager to try it out. But th like I said, this is one that we thought about quite a bit because it is quite expensive but it's been on our list for ages and that's basically been the theme of this month um what's left on our wish list um and let's clear it out um so like i don't understand how i got rid of so many games but i still have so many games um i really 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 don't i thought we were clearing stuff out um and instead we've just kind of cleared our wish list out and in fact there is still money left in the kitty for another game if we really wanted and we can't even pick one so I <laughs> don't know if I should be proud or not of that but there's something very satisfying about being at the end of the, the purchasing the, you know making it the end like this is it now I just want to sit and play my games please um, yeah so that was what I bought this month I would love to hear what you bought this month are you preparing for Christmas have you gone anything in in advance or if you do buy games for Christmas, are you making yourself wait till Christmas Day or are you cheating horribly like I am? Which is, you know, tearing them open as they arrive and going, yeah, yeah, we'll play them around Christmas, but we will also play them now. Um, brilliant. Um, okay, so the second section of this should be a little bit quicker. Um, and this is trades. Way. Um, and because we've been selling stuff, um, trades have been less. Or actually, it's probably the way around because we couldn't trade stuff. We sold things. Um, but I did uh, make two trades um, this month. And they were both very exciting. Actually, I think it's three. It is three trades. Okay, so, and some of these I'm super, actually all of these I'm really happy about. So the first on the trade list is a really interesting one. And one I'm really, really happy about. So I traded away a my copy of Fantasy Ranch, um, which you may remember from my review, um, in it, um, with a copy of Ticket to Ride New York um, in exchange for a copy of The Expanse. Um, and the reason this is so good is because Fantasy Ranch really is a family game, right? I don't, I don't have any kids to play with or families. I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was a, a really good game and super well made. And if you love horses, then yeah, it was brilliant, but it wasn't for me. And I found somebody wanted to trade for it who had like a, a little girl in their family who loved horses. And I love that that game has gone to a, a house with a child who will enjoy the game. Um, that's that really made it for me. Um, so fantastic, happy about that. So The Expanse, from what I can tell from the box, is a big space game. But not so big that it's Twilight Imperium, but big enough basically what the box told me. Um, it's another one of these, put out the hexes in space, move your ships around, you do have ships, and you get to do stuff. There's some very fascinating looking player boards that you seem to put all sorts of counters on. Um, but it's, people seem to like it, and it was actually, this was actually on our wish list of things. That, does anybody else make the, we have a wish list on Board Game Geek, and it's like, what, 40, 50 things, and then you forget most of what's on it, and then people offer you, and you're like, oh yeah, I did put that on there, that could be good. And so, um, and we, we went from having literally no space games to having like, three really big ones really quickly. Um, so this this one was a very exciting and happy trade. I, I, I wish Fantasy Ranch good luck in its new home and on to greener pastures. Um, so the next thing we traded was, um, so we traded away a copy of Res Arcana. Res Arcana was a, a really good card game. I won't lie, it was a very good card game. We liked it a lot. And we played a, a good amount of it, but we just, I don't know, it just wasn't appealing enough to take it off the shelf. Do games have to have shelf appeal now? Maybe they do. It, might, it just became that we would play something else over it. Still a really good game. And we traded that for a copy of Glen Moore. Um, Glen Moore is in the Aaliyah Medium Box series. So I have more games with numbers on the sides of them. <laughs> no, it's to do with Scottish Highlands and place and tiles. Um, and it's Glen Moore 2 recently came out. Um, and my husband was really looking at and uh, looking at it. And then he went and looked at what Glen Moore the original was. So it was on our wish list. And I was quite happy to trade that. Um, I always think getting a game you haven't played versus getting rid of a game you have played is far more worth it than the value of the games themselves like we lose a lot of value when we trade and we just don't care because it's like i'm not playing this game i would play that game i'm okay with this uh so that's glenn moore okay so now there was one very big trade that went down so hold on to your hats children so i got rid of between two castles of mad king ludwig um 
really awesome, very pretty um, tile laying game. Ceylon, which was a game I got at less in the previous year about making tea. Also quite cool, but um, I don't know, yet again, no shelf appeal maybe. Um, Flick Fleet, which is a kick-ass dexterity game, but we just, we really, we love dexterity games, but we never play them. Um, the Networks. So the Networks was an interesting game. It's a tableau builder about, you know, running a TV network and you're trying to match up all the stations with like the right times and stuff to get the maximum viewership. And we had that and some expansions. Um, and we liked it, but it didn't really hit any sweet spot for us. So that's why it moved on. We also got rid of the Oracle of Delphi. Now, this is, the, this is not the first F on Fell game we've got rid of this month. Um, we now have like eight. It's kind of silly. Really like the Oracle of Delphi. It's a great game, but it is a race game in its core. And to be fair, we've kind of enough race games as is, but it, it's a brilliant game. We also got rid of Spectre Ops. Spectre Ops is a one versus many game. So you can see where this is going with no one to play it with. <laughs> um, we've gone and played it and the last one I got rid of was Symphony Number no. 9 um, this is also a really really good game and it's it's an economic game basically it's about kind of um, betting on which composers um, so <laughs> I'm sure I'm doing really good at remembering it because it's been so long since I played it hence why it got traded um, but yeah it's a game about it's a game about composers and who's going to be kind of the most popular and making sure you back that you're a patron of these composers so you want to back them to get the most money out of it um, it's actually a really smart game really really fun we just you know there were other things we would play over it I think that was the main issue okay so all of those went away and in exchange we got a copy of <laughs> Aquasphere by Stefan Feld we're obsessed with Stefan Feld at the minute this just looks incredible um, the second thing is Notre Dame, <coughs> which is both a city title game and a Stefan Fell game, so it's got to be really, really good. And last but not least is Endeavor Age of Sail, the Kickstarter um, deluxe version, which seems to have game trays inside of it. And all I know about that game is there are boats and the map is beautiful. This was one of my, my husband picked, um, but I'm very excited to try that out. I have to say the trays and everything make it look really super, super fancy. So that was it. So yeah, that there were all the trades. As you can see, I have more games to play. I think we got some really good trades this month. I'm really happy about that. Um, so do you trade? Did you manage to do any trading yourself? Um, or did you manage to swap any games with anybody? I would really love to hear that. So yeah, that's a pretty ridiculous amount of games. My head's only exploding just, just a tad. But um, what I'm telling myself is this is December's games. This is Christmas present. It's probably also January and February's games without doubt because we've got to the end. And this is normally the point in the video where I go, oh no, my wish list. I'd like to get such and such. No, no wish list. Wish lists are like dead to me. Um, I just, I got to the end of it. I, I like, I literally, I think I'm right at the end. Short of finding myself a copy of Russian Railroads, like... This is it. Um, the only things left on my like, trade list or my wish list are very old games and they're just things that if somebody happened to have that would be great. I'm not going to go and look them out. I have so many things I, I can't wait to play. So <clears throat> I'm going to make a section now at the end of the video and also want you to, to chime in. And that is the games that I am most excited to play. And so these can be games you already own or games you wish you own or anything like that. But I want to know what games make you excited about gaming. So for this month, the things I'm most excited to play or get super excited about is the Orleans Invasion expansion. Um, I love Orleans. Love, love, love Orleans. I've played a lot of it actually, um, which is rare because a lot of the games in my collection are played once because there's so many. Um, and I'm going to fix that, you'll see. But the um, Orleans is one I've played a good number of times and the expansion makes it kind of co-op and you're defending the city and people say it's hard and really fun. And that just inspires me. I get excited. I look at the side of the box and I'm like, yes. So um, that's definitely one that's super exciting. The second thing actually is Noria. Um, and this is just because there's something about when you take something out of the box, right? And you look at all the pieces and you're like, ooh, how, how's this gonna work? What's this gonna do? And it's got all of that in spades. And I can't wait to see how a personal roundel works. Like you put a cog on top of another cog and one spins and the other spins, yeah, make, make this higher. Um, and I'm really intrigued. I think it's, I love when you, I see a game do something different that isn't just gimmicky, but you know what I mean? That, that, that fits with the game and what it's trying to do. So I think, I think that's gonna be really exciting. Um, and the last thing I suppose I'm most excited about, take a look at my shelf one more time. 
think it might be Endeavour Age of Sail and that's just because I don't know anything about it yet and from the kind of box appeal and what I've seen inside it, it looks like a really special fancy nice and fun game and I, I I love a bit of the unknown just just a hint of the unknown um and I can't I can't wait to get these can't wait to get these played and then repeatedly play them does that make sense I think I think it's long past you but I think also it's part of my role as a reviewer is that board games do come in and out of my life uh, and, I, and some might have to play at speed you know um and I'm okay I'm okay with that but for a while I would just love to sit down and appreciate what I have um and enjoy it and not that I don't do that too but not it's not the same I think it's not the same so yeah so what would what, what's got you excited about gaming this month and are you preparing to get yourself anything for Christmas um a lot of people are putting up you know their top five games or whatever they buy for Christmas and I'm gonna tell you now I ain't doing no such thing because I'm not here to tell you what to buy I'm here to show you games and get you excited about games and if that works maybe then you'll go look into them some more maybe you'll buy one maybe you won't that's okay um I just want you to have the information but um, I'll see if I can put something together, something a little more, a little bit different, a little bit more me. And next month, month monthly roundup, as far as I'm aware, should be the the Golden Board Game Awards, the annual Golden Cleric Board Game Awards or Golden Board Game Awards, as I was calling it last year. I had a lot of fun making a, an annual um, video um, with some kind of really interesting head. Um, some really interesting um, kind of categories that kind of fit me instead of this whole your top 10 games. I can't numerically order my games, it's just unfair and unrealistic expectation to put on me. Um, so I much prefer coming up with fun categories and talking about those. So you can keep your eyes peeled for that. I hope you like that. Maybe I, last year's one, I had a rewatch. Wasn't too bad, um, but I get very anxious, <laughs> very anxious. So yeah, come and tell me about your month, tell me about your gaming and why not introduce yourself? I, I would love to hear from more of you. And until next month, um, I'll be here playing games, asking questions, and of course, perusing my collection. Take care, everybody.